One of the stories that has really inspired me for many, many years is something I read long ago that starts with Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz, who was a German polymath who co-invented the calculus with Sir Isaac Newton. He also corresponded with over 600 people across Europe during his day, which was a pretty big deal back then when you think about what, what correspondence was like before, in the days before email. And this story progresses, but if you don't like Leibniz, pick Spinoza or Bacon, or if you know of women from back then who unfortunately didn't get written into history that much, pick one of them. But he was thought to have known all the different disciplines of his day. So he was a polymath, and he understood not just mathematics, but also th theology and literature and all the different disciplines and, and, and the emerging uh, practices of medicine. So then, you know, the notion is that then this band explodes and knowledge gets bigger than any one person can hold in their head and then what happens is disciplines form up and you get the early early colleges which are religious in Europe at the beginning but then you get the mathem mathematics department and the history department and and the literature department and, and walls form up between them and competition starts to form up like everybody's racing to explain how the world works but you know the mathematician is not so crazy about the humanities people and back and forth and all the way around and then one day it dawns on me what if this isn't a, a plate or a plane that's exploding? What if Leibniz is standing on a sphere? What if he's actually on a round object? And these disciplines are each diverging for a long, long time and fleshing themselves out. And the way people are, are developing their careers, their reputations is, they pick a little fractal edge of the ever-expanding edge of their discipline, and that's their dissertation. Then they kind of tend to have to defend that for the rest of their, their you know, uh, professional career. So what if, in fact, uh, they're starting to converge? What if they've gone past the equator and they're beginning to come together? And it's my perception, my impression from speaking to people in lots of different disciplines, that they seem to be saying things that are really similar to each other, yet in their own jargon, in the language of each of their disciplines. So this model here, this little mental model, begs the question, what's over here? What's at the other end? Where is this all heading? And the best explanation I've found so far at this end, I'm borrowing from Taoism, from yin and yang. And here I'll say that um, traditionally in Taoism, yin is, is receptive, feminine, dark earth energy, and yang is active, male, outward, bright energy. But let me overload the terms a little bit. Yang is also rational, logical, Cartesian, hierarchical, command and control, analytic kind of energy. Um, where yin is emotional, spiritual, ecological, systemic, biological, emergent, abundant, creative energy. Now, I don't want to say that one side of this is good and one side of this is bad, because if you go back to Taoism, a healthy entity, whether it's an individual or a society or a planet, really needs to have yin and yang in creative tension. The interesting stuff is happening here between the two. And what I think is happening right now, over at this other end, the period I believe we're in, is we're in a great rebalancing that we've been suffering, pardon me here, from too much yang for a long time, at least 300 years back to the uh, Industrial Revolution, and maybe 3,000 years back to the advent of linear writing, if you like Leonard Schlein. There's plenty of theories of, of history that have these grand sweeps to them, you know, big history kind of claims. But at least since the Industrial Revolution, science and logic and rationality have designed all the institutions that we take for granted right now. And a lot of them were designed with no yin present, no room for yin. And what's happened recently is that yin has begun to show up again. Yin has a place to be. Yin shows up on the internet. Yin shows up in lots of interpersonal relationships. So we're in this great rebalancing. I think it's taking us wonderful places. And I think my role in all of this is to actually help this change come about more quickly by bringing attention to it, by collaborating with the people who are making it happen, and uh, hopefully by creating a few things that will, will accelerate the process as well.